So I'm joined with Jason from TLDR Filmmaker, a fellow YouTuber, and we often have lots of discussions about YouTube, our struggles, and how we kind of learn from those mistakes. So we thought we'd bring this information to you guys. So Jason, thanks for joining. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I think this is gonna be a very interesting discussion, but a beneficial discussion, whether you're a beginner, intermediate, maybe even advanced YouTuber. So thank you so much for uh, inviting me for this discussion. Absolutely, can't wait to get started. So let's talk about how you got started reviewing gear. All right, so I pretty much started with the gear that I already did have that I invested in for the last, I don't know, four some years before I started YouTube. And I just remembered that when I was looking for information on these specific things, I would have to span across quite a few different reviews to get the answers I wanted. Sometimes I didn't even get the answer. I actually mm -hmm. just had to watch them like move the focus ring. That was something that I really was bugged by that no one would ever tell you what the focus throw actually was. I was like, man, someone should just say this stuff. So that's how I got started. I wanted to answer questions that nobody else did. And uh, yeah, it's been pretty fun ever since. But how about you? How did you get started with this whole YouTube reviewing stuff? So I got started in a very similar fashion. I just reviewed the products I already owned because mm -hmm. at that time I was just getting into video and I've been researching tons about different cameras, lighting, and I wanted some outlet to test my you know, filmmaking skills. Mm -hmm. By making enough videos, eventually you get reached out by companies to review gear mm -hmm. as a form of marketing and advertising and getting feedback on their products. Mm -hmm. um, do you remember your very first product review that a company sent you out something? I do remember this because it was a very exciting day <laughs> when someone actually <laughs> reached imagine. out. Because it's like, oh, you've, you've done it. Someone actually yeah. likes what you do. <laughs> um, <laughs> the first company that reached out to me was actually GVM. They do LED panels and they've actually grown quite a bit since then. But yeah, they sent me out their they sent me out two of them. They're 520S bicolored panels. And you know, I was excited. I got the package, I opened it up. I was like, wow, look at these LED panels. They're so much better than anything that I have right now. Cause I was literally using one light bulb back then if you see my old videos. You know, I was interested in just reviewing it, testing it out, seeing what kind of images could I get out of it. And uh, you know, it was a very basic review process. I just kind of introduced the product in terms of what it could do, how to use it on a basic level. And uh, yeah, that was, uh, that was a fun time for me, receiving that package. Did they reach out to you or did you reach out to them? They reached out to me. Uh, I think they okay. actually sent me a Facebook message and then we corresponded with email after that. And how many subscribers or how many views were you getting at that point to give us a, an idea? Oh, that's a good question. I want to say I was maybe, I know I was over a thousand, but maybe not, maybe not by much. Maybe I was at like 2000, somewhere around there. Cause my first initial videos were always a lot of things that people were wondering about. So they got a lot of traction right away. How about you? Do you remember the first company that reached out to you? I remember getting reached out by a company called Comica. Oh yeah. And I haven't heard from them before. I didn't know what they were, but they wanted to send me a microphone. Mm. And I'm like, at that point, I think I had a lapel microphone that I plugged into my phone. Mm. So the fact that I would get a legit microphone, I'm like, sweet, yeah. <laughs> I can actually use this. So it was a lot of fun just to kind of unbox a product and give my feedback, just like I did with any other video. But the fact that, you know, I got something in exchange, I was providing value enough companies saw that I provided value mm -hmm. for them. It was um, definitely an eye-opening experience. You don't really need a whole lot of subscribers to start. Just start with what you have and you know, people will start sending you more messages. Mm -hmm. From there, you can assume that as you grow your YouTube channel, more and more companies start asking if they wanna send you free stuff, mm -hmm. which is awesome. But there is, you know, a bit of a downfall and you have to begin to weed out some products because mm -hmm. you cannot accept all these different products. I don't think you'd have the time for that. Halfway through the second year, I was like, man, there is way too much. I don't have time. So I have to like really start yeah. looking at, is this going to really, really be exciting for someone to know about? Or is this just another product that basically does the same thing as just a different brand? 
So one of the first things that I got knocked out in my vetting process and weeding out is monitors, cheap budget monitors. They okay. all pretty much do the same thing. They all have the same <laughs> features. One might have more nits of brightness than the other. And that's not something I need to test to let you know what that is. If you just looked at the spec sheet on Amazon, 1,000 nits, 700 nits, 3,000 nits. You don't need a review to see that. Reviewing gear, it's almost in a way, it is a form of marketing for a lot of companies. Mm -hmm. Their product gets seen, and from that, it's a form of advertisement, actually. Mm -hmm. But as our job as reviewers is to share our genuine thoughts yeah. and feedback, I want to just briefly talk about what the process of companies reaching out to a reviewer, what that looks like mm -hmm. for someone who's maybe getting into this and what to expect. Okay. During the beginning, it was a lot of, you know, we'll send it out to you for free and you test it, you do whatever you want and just make a video. We don't, you don't have to, we don't have to watch it. Just do a video for us and let us know when you finish and ha it's on live. Mm -hmm. So that's like the most basic way. Sometimes you will get it where they want to have a little bit more control in what it is that you say. So they will say, you know, please show us the video before you ever post mm. it. And that's part of my process that I say, well, if you want to see it beforehand, I'm not reviewing it then. Why was that? Well, this actually will probably be another whole nother discussion. So let, let's let's hang on that note for a second. Okay. Uh, the third one that I've encountered is buy it from Amazon first and we'll refund you. And that's something I don't, I don't play with. I don't want to mm. do that either. And again, it's just because, you know, if you can't send it to me, but you want me to buy it first, does, it just doesn't rub me the right way. So I just be like, well, sorry, then I'm not reviewing it. I would say, you know, those are the three common ways you would be reached out. And I would say the first way is the best way. They send it to you, no strings attached. You can say whatever you want. They don't need to see it beforehand so that you can be very true in your critique of their product. Obviously the best way I agree is if a company is trustworthy of you and they, you know, they're a fan of your content mm -hmm. and they're like, yes, just do whatever we love, you know, what you do. That's obviously gives you the most creative freedom. Mm -hmm. And if it's a product and company you love and enjoy, that process is a lot easier and smoother. They trust you. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, my most recent, like one of my reviews is a company from Condor Blue. Mm -hmm they sent me a demo unit. So mm -hmm. I had one of the only S1H cages and I was able to give feedback and we had a much deeper kind of connection than just reviewing a gear. I was able to give feedback. They implemented changes based off my feedback, mm -hmm. which is something I'm really excited about. Yeah, it's yeah. almost like I'm part of the planning process. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the general process, they usually ask you how long you expect the video to take. Mm. For me, that's usually about a month is where I feel comfortable, mm -hmm. um, if not longer, because I like to get to know the product and right. test it out. And it really just depends on the product, because like you said, certain products you should probably play with a lot more. So other products right. you can be a little bit more technical in your review and just giving the raw information because that's all the review really needs. Depending on the review, it could take two to four weeks. Um, obviously, it'd be good if they just say, just take your time, like, you know, do it when you're ready. What do you think makes a quality YouTube product review? Honesty. <laughs> what do you really think about it? Honesty and context. So there are definitely some times where people will kind of hit me in the comments and say, well, I'm a photographer. I said, right, my channel's called Too Long Didn't Read Filmmaker. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I'm, I'm not a photographer, so I'm not gonna talk about that. So when, so when I say context, uh, I try my best to remind people I'm a narrative filmmaker. That's what I primarily do. So my viewpoints about this product is from that standpoint. Honesty is gonna make you much more successful in terms of your audience building and making sure people just really get the information they actually need. So how do you react to people who maybe write a comment and ask and say, oh, Jason's a sellout, you know, you just get free gear and review it, that's all you do. <laughs> what are your thoughts on that conversation? I would 
kindly tell them, you're wrong. That's, I am not selling out by any means. It might look that way because of how much stuff I have been reviewing, especially this year and into last year. But really, they don't understand why I'm doing it. So a lot of the products that I do get in, they're very similar, whether they're lights, they're wireless microphones, you know, stuff like that. So what I'm trying to actually do here is there's all these different options. And I know as a consumer, you're trying to determine, well, which one is going to be the best one for you? So I accept these reviews because I want to build up a library so that people can go back and say, I've put these things through exactly the same tests. Nothing has changed. And if they can have that baseline, they can look at all of it and be like, well, he performed the same tests and this microphone or this light did way better. So therefore, that's the light for me. So that's what I'm trying to get at. I'm not, I'm not favoring a company just because they're giving me something free. I am going to test it in the exactly the same way so people can get the information they want. So I'm sorry if some people think I'm selling out, but that's not my goal. My goal is to provide you with information so you can be best informed of your own buying decisions. I guess it comes down to the thought of, well, if you get something for free, it must change your opinion on that product because you're oh, not paying for that. Definitely not. <laughs> I can see on your face that you don't agree with that statement. I do not. Do you elaborate. Yes. Um, again, it might seem that I like everything that I've reviewed and that I there's very few things that I've s said I don't recommend. And part of that is the vetting process that we talked about. Is this something that I feel people want to know about? And is there enough information based on their spec sheets that they sent me that I say, oh, this should be good. So, you know, I'm already reviewing products based on that I know it's gonna perform well based on what they've told me. So, of course, it's not gonna be a bad product. I don't wanna review a bad product, but there have been a couple that have been legitimately bad products. And I've stated that in my video. I said, I don't recommend this. <laughs> because I cannot justify anybody to purchase it. When you do a good vetting process, you're already gonna be reviewing quality products in general. Right, Because I'm pretty, totally agree. I'm pretty sure if you and I accepted everything that we've been asked to review, I would have a lot more videos where I, in my TLDR section, do I recommend this? No. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yeah. So from our early stage of starting with small product reviews, we've always tried to keep true to ourselves and the content we try to make. You know, we're trying to make content that we find fulfilling as well as, you know, growing our own YouTube channels and being, being impactful in the community based. So that's part of our reason to transition to more educational because you and I are both always growing and changing as filmmakers. Mm -hmm. And so part of the content that I want to see and I want to start to make is, you know, the intricacies of being a cinematographer, you know, out in the field. I like listening to other DPs talk about, you know, similar experiences they've been through. So I kind of want to eventually dive into that, but I think there will be a transition where maybe it's more tutorial based, um, you know, how I light things or how I color grade. I'm sure it's going to be a similar transition for you. Yeah, definitely. Because, you know, I can't make gear review stuff all the time if I can't give it what I kind of talked about, context. How, why am I reviewing it this way? It's because it's based on my experiences of how I use certain products. So I do want to you know, just get away from doing just a bunch of different reviews and really just start teaching people how to use it. Because eventually that is the evolution of a filmmaker. You're learning about gear first, and then you go on to set with that gear and you quickly find out were you correct in your assumptions or <laughs> were you not? And you learn from that. So I kind of want to cut, I want to cut away that learning portion. Can I take what I've learned and spare you the, spare you that moment on a set when you suddenly realized you chose the wrong gear for the job. <laughs> well, thank you for joining. I loved hearing your your thoughts and your feedback on this topic because not many people mention the intricacies of a YouTube creator. Mm -hmm. um, so thank you for joining. Yeah, no, thank you. And guys, if you have questions, it, 
You know, if you're a content creator, you're just starting out, doesn't have to be about filmmaking. It could be about computers, uh, maybe your auto mechanics channel. I don't know. Anything, if you have questions, go ahead and leave it down below. And I'm sure Nate and I can, you know, gather together for another podcast and just answer those questions for you. Absolutely. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you so much. We'll catch you next time. Bye. <laughs> and bam. Whoa.